how is this series impacting your, your today? Um, isn't it really true that um, in a trendy world that we're living in, the best things in life are timeless? Here is an old phone, which was once a high-priced commodity, but now is a relic. What we know for sure is that the, the fact that technology isn't timeless. It's always changing, and that's the problem with trend. It is impossible to keep up. But there are things in life that stand the test of time. There are things in life that do impact our today, our tomorrow, and our forever. From the two previous sermons, that is eternity and uh, being the ultimate caretaker, we learn a few things. We learn that when heaven is trivialized, when heaven is made out to be of less, less importance, then our lives can become marginalized, meaningless. We also learn that what we do in this life, in this moment, in the now, in the today, will show up in eternity. And as we move on to the second sermon, being the ultimate caregiver, we learn that God himself instituted financial principle long before the law was given to the nation of Israel at Mount Sinai. God himself gave financial advice to the nation of Israel not to rob him. It's recorded in Malachi 3, but to bring his tithes into the storehouse. And that is the best financial advice ever. And in return, it guarantees the best return on investment. No company, not even Apple, will give you that return on your investment. God also triple dog dear us. The word of God said in Malachi 3 verse 10, test me in this and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that you will not have enough room to store it. Amen. God triple dear you. Be reminded that we here at Abundant Life Gospel Center, our main focus really is worshiping God. Laying prostrate at his feet. Also, our main focus is being the hands and feet of Jesus in the surrounding communities. We do not focus on money, but we will be naive not to say that money is not important. We need money to do ministry. In other words, what I'm trying to say, we are not making giving a legalistic affair. Also, I must caution you, I'm not leaving any room for misunderstanding. Being a passionate contributor or someone who brings the tithes into the warehouse do not mean you get a ticket into eternity with God. For the Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 8, for by grace you have, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift from God. So don't leave your believing that when you throw your tithes consistently, you automatically go into heaven. Eternal life is by the grace of God. This last sermon of the Timeless series is to seek your response to the two previous sermons. We have some juicy stuff to talk about. Juicy stuff. Are you ready to pull your chair around the dining table and dive into the juicy, succulent stuff with me? Are you ready? I'm, I'm asking you to join me. We are going to talk about today about one thing in life that will impact our today our tomorrow, and our forever. Today's timeless trait has the potential not only to change your life, it has the potential to change your family tree. Today we are going to talk about something that has quite 
possibly been plaguing your family tree for a while. And today, beginning today, you're going to take a step to change that. I am so glad you came here today because we are going to talk about one of the most important lessons you will ever hear. And if you apply this, it will have significant impact on your life and those in your life. Hear what I want to talk about today. It's a seven letter word, starts with F. It's freedom. Yes, it's financial freedom. I'm not sure what your thought is when you hear this. I'm not sure what you're thinking. You might feel that you are so far behind in debt and this seems impossible for you to be financially free. You might be feeling pressured and you might feel that it seems so hard that the church is talking about this. But financial freedom is one of the most important topics that we as a church should be discussing. Not only discussing it, but helping to deliver people from such bondage in the name of Jesus. Because not only, it's only good things comes from God. And financial bondage is certainly not one. Not a gift from God. Financial bondage wreaks havoc in many people's life. Some folks may be thinking, the church just want my money. The church just want my money. But isn't that interesting? No one ever say that about Visa and MasterCard. The church isn't the one charging high interest rate. The church doesn't want something from you. We want something for you. And the emphasis is on for. We want something not from you, but for you. We want you to experience financial freedom. More importantly, that's what your heavenly father wants as well. When you experience financial freedom, it not only helps your life today, it frees you up to impact future generation in your own family and beyond. Financial freedom is timeless. What is this series about? Timeless. People hold millions, billions of dollars in credit cards and other forms of credit. Many of them have no idea the outrageous rate of interest they are being charged. The unreasonable interest rate eats away your financial future. But it's not just about the money. There is a domino effect of this financial bondage. It eats, it can eat away your peace of mind. So many people become depressed. And after um, eating away that peace of mind, it wreaks havoc to our health. High blood pressure. You're always thinking about the bills and it affect our relationship. It's no surprise that financial problem still ranks number one cause for divorce. I say all of this to say this. Our church, Abundant Life Gospel Center, wants you to experience financial freedom. Again, more importantly, so does your heavenly father. We want you to experience financial freedom. I fully understand why many may doubt, may have lingering doubts in their mind about a preacher speaking on this subject. For example, I had the pleasure of speaking with one of our youth about the sermon last week titled Being the Ultimate Caretaker. He told me at first he wasn't sure where the sermon was going. And he was just about to zone it out as one of those prosperity gospel sermons. 
However, he quickly realized it wasn't and had to learn from it what God's financial advice is to his people. I said that to bring out the point that there's a lot of understandable doubts when it comes to preachers speaking about money. Maybe you grew up in or attended a church that it seems like there's a lot of pressure about giving money. Or maybe you have seen the television evangelist asking for money and it just seems a little shady. As a result, maybe you're thinking the church just want my money. There may be some churches out there like that, but not Abundant Life Gospel Center and not a Christ-believing church. You must come to the understanding, don't be naive, there are church and there are church. There's a church that Christ said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And there are churches that are not Christ's church. They're operating under the banner of Christ, but they're antichrist. They are there for other reasons. And I understand, but think about this. Isn't it interesting that no one say this about credit card companies, businesses, and the mortgage companies? I'm not being critical of those companies. I'm just making a point to say, no one say, Home Depot just wants my money. Lowe's just want my money. The brick just wants my money. In an amazing twist of irony, the one and only organization on planet Earth that wants to help you the most with your finances is the one most criticized as the one you can't trust. And I understand. Could you just bow your head with me? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, I come before you another time to speak to the people whom you love so much that you left your glory above, robe yourself in corruptible flesh, and break into a world that you could redeem us. I'm standing before your people. And I can't do this by myself. I'm depending on you that the words that comes from my mouth will have your spirit attached to it. And it will touch hearts. And it will go forth to do what you needed to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the last and final sermon of the time in the series is Financial Freedom, a Gift for You. The main idea is our church doesn't want something from you. Our church wants something for you. The scripture reading is Proverbs 22, verse 7b. There is only one sermon point today, and it is the breakthrough from bondage. Let us get right into the sermon point. Juicy stuff. The Bible declares in Proverbs 22, verse 7b, the borrower is slave to the lender. When we become a borrower, we are taking on the role, the title, the position of a slave to that particular lender. Those seven words in Proverbs 22, verse 7b speak volumes. They say a lot. So the goal today is to inspire you to take a step forward to financial freedom. To break through. The breakthrough from bondage. To accomplish this, we are going to talk about one primary principle from the Bible. It is both important and simple. In fact, it is only half of a verse. Granted, it's not easy. It's simply, it is simple, but not easy. But as you are about to see this, this is where the church comes in. We want to help you. Today, 
I want us to simply look at those seven words. The borrower is slave to the lender. And see how devastating the impact, this truth, this biblical truth, has on many people. That's surely the bad news. But the good news is that this doesn't have to be true for you any longer. Today is a step forward towards freedom. Let me relate to you a story. There is this gentleman I know very, very well. He and his wife, I know them very well. His wife was anxious in purchasing a home two years after migrating to Canada. He found a mortgage broker who found a bank that was willing to finance the home up to 95% of the purchase price. The gentleman felt that he and his wife could afford the mortgage payment because they were affording the rent, but they didn't have their 5%. He, in turn, went to another lender for an unsecure loan to finance the 5%. The end result was that they now had two loans to repay and eventually led them into very, very difficult financial times. Their action negatively impacted them both and their family for a mighty long time. Just a very bad decision on their part. They became slaves to two lenders. Dave Ramsey, the founder of the infamous Financial Peace University and radio talk host of the radio show Dave Ramsey Show, he knows what it is like to have it all and to lose it all. By the age 26, he had established a four million real estate portfolio. At the age 26 could be about 30 years ago, $4 million 30 years ago is a lot of money. However, he lose it all by the age 30. 30 minus 26 is four. In four years, Dave is fond of saying, act your wage. You're familiar with act your age. But we in the body of Christ need to exercise the self-discipline and practice the, the discipline of simplicity so we can act our wage. We can't just pray our way out of financial mess. Ah, you know, that's a deception from the enemy. You figure you can just pray and a magic wand will be waved and your financial mess will go away. No, that's a lie from the enemy. He doesn't want you to break through from the bondage. You have to pray indeed, but you also have to act your way out of that financial mess. But also you have to get hungry. That's right, hungry. Wait, wait, pastor. What are you saying? I thought it's a sin to be hungry. I want you to have a righteous indignation. God in his word allow us to be hungry. For in Ephesians 4 verse 26, the Bible says, be angry and do not sin. It's time for us to get tired of being charged exorbitant interest rate. It's time for us to get tired of being a slave to someone we owe money to. No one deserves to be our God, but God Almighty, El Shaddai, Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Shalom. He is to be our only God. And God stands ready to help us. But are we really tired and angry enough? This won't be easy. But it can be simple, trust me. We are here to help each other. It won't get fixed in a day. The problem took longer than a day to be created and has been going on for a while. But help 
can happen. And I believe when God see us taking step towards financial freedom, by turning to him, he will in turn return to us. God said that in Malachi 3 verse 7. He will help us. His church is here to help you too. The church does not want something from you. The church wants something for you. This is going to require something of us. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear what that is? It is going to require a four-letter word. Start with P. It is going to require a plan. The Bible declares in Proverbs 21 verse 5a, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. You got to plan. David had a plan to build a house for, for the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant. He had a plan. Nehemiah had a plan to build the wall and the gate in Jerusalem. Hear what the plans look like. Give. Save. Live. Give 10%. Or the amount you can afford to give and give it consistently. Remember God said you should test him in your giving. He has triple dog dear you. Then you save 10% and live off the rest. If the rest is so much that there's excess, then you can increase your savings or increase your giving. This is a long-term plan. It might take you a while to get there. But you can get there. But you are going to need some help. And this is why we want to take you a step towards a small group study that focuses on finances. Enjoy these two clips. Joseph Sengel, and I want to talk to you for a quick minute about the I Was Broke Now and Not group study. It's DVD-based, and it is a six-session group study that enables you to take the journey, the financial journey, together with others. Many people attempt to fix their financial issues on their own, and they end up stuck and many times feel alone. There's no doubt about it. You can make progress on your own, but life is much better done with other people. And the same is true with your finances. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 15, 22, that plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. When you work together with others in a financial group study, then you are able to draw from the experiences of others. So if you're married, you can learn from other married couples about how they've been able to have financial conversations in a way that is productive and doesn't lead to negative emotion. As we know, 
That's the number one thing that couples fight about is money. If you're single, particularly if you're a single spender, uh, you know how important it is to have accountability so that every single week you can show up, be challenged to make sure that you've implemented what we have asked you to do as part of the group study. Here's what I know. If you take this group study, you will see marked improvement in your finances. You'll be held accountable uh, to take the steps that you said you needed to take. But if you don't have someone there that you're going to meet with in the next week to say, did you take them, you might remain stuck. In this study, you're going to learn about how to have plans, hopes, and dreams for your life, that you get to dream again. Uh, we're going to teach you how to have a budget to make sure that you can fund those dreams. We're going to show you how to save money, how to kill debt. Don't you want to kill some debt? And then we're also going to teach you about how to invest to be able to fund those big-time dreams in your life, like your kids' college or retirement, and other things like trips around the world or to be able to give tons of money away. We're going to teach you about insurance and then how to stick with this for the long haul. I really encourage you to grab your copy of the I Was Broke, Now I'm Not group study, the copy of my book, I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, complete with lessons about the ladder, eight ways that you can kill debt even faster, and the accompanying group study guide. You can grab it today at one of the buttons that says Purchase Now located next to this video. You can be started on your journey to financial freedom and fully funded life. Get fired up. You can do this. Great. Are you fired up? Amen. Amen. The book that he's referring to, right there, there are the books on the table. We're, we're ready to go. I'm fired up. And right here in my hand is the DVD that has on the six lessons that we would work through. Also, I have right here, this is the work the study guide that comes along with it, and the book that is there is this book. Okay, so we are fired up and ready to go to kill some debt. <laughs> this financial curriculum will be an ongoing group study that will be facilitated on the, the stewardship ministry being launched soon. You will hear more about that. There are four sign-up um, sheets that will be going around just now. So, not to scare you, but there is a cost involved. However, I think it is very minimal, although I could be wrong, relatively speaking. You will receive a book and the study guide, the book, the cost involved only for, the cost involved, sorry, is only for the book and the study guide. The teaching of the class is free to you. That's on us, as it's a ministry effort. The cost to purchase the book and the study guide is 30 US. That's the equivalent of 42 Canadian and it will fluctuate. We, the leadership of Abundant Life Gospel Center, is so excited about what the Lord is doing and is about to do. Therefore, we are partnering with the first 10 person who signs up by subsidizing the cost by 50%. So the first 10 persons will only need to pay Canadian $21. I could not come up with a better way to identify um, the 10 persons, the first 10 persons. So um, please note a time on the sign-up sheet in the column. Um, note the time when you sign up on the, the, that sheet um, in the column that is provided. I'll be using the time of sign-up to determine those 10 persons. I, I, I will be using that time, and I'm still praying uh, that someone will step forward with a huge donation that's that everyone that want to be a part of this group we can subsidize their costs that would be timeless please note your contact information is very important especially your email as it allows for group communication so is your cell numbers as whatsapp group can be established 
for this financial group study. We're looking to commence this group study on Tuesday, October 31st, for six consecutive weeks starting, um, yes, as I said before, October 31st and ending December 5th. The class will be for approximately, maybe less, an hour and a half. That is from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at our ministry facility located at 17 Erie Street in Oshawa. We are aiming to have at least one group study every three months or quarterly, regardless of the class size. So one person is considered a full class in our eyes. Just one person. Because when one soul accepts Christ, there's a party in heaven. And we want to bring heaven here on earth. We want to let people become financially free. We want folks who are not only members or regular visitors, but folks off the street to be invited in this group study that they may also enjoy financial freedom. That's where I need each and every one of you to get the word around, to invite someone, invite your neighbor, bring your children, invest in people. It is timeless. That investment will stand the test of time. Finally, let me go back to this old phone. And I must say there is nothing wrong with chasing the latest trend. There's nothing wrong with that. Because I have my eyes on an iPhone X. So there is, no, there is no, nothing wrong in, in chasing after the latest trend. But there is something wrong when it puts you in financial bondage. So in other words, I'm saying I have to save towards that iPhone X. Financial freedom is something your heavenly father desires for you. And when you experience financial freedom, it leads to an incredible value, both now and forever. Let me repeat myself. Financial freedom is timeless. And if you don't do it for yourself, I'm asking you to do it for your family. You're going to have to fight for this. It's never easy. But your heavenly father stand ready to fight with you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He said be of good courage. So we at Abundant Life Gospel Center will be on that journey with you. By the way, if you were not here last week, I would highly encourage you to listen to last week's message on giving. Better yet, listen to both previous sermons. Just visit our website, www.abundantlifegospelcenter.ca and you will be able to have access to those sermons. And remember this one thing. If you have not gotten anything from this sermon today, I want to leave this with you. Remember, if someone should stop you on the way and say, oh, was church? This thing, remember to say, Abundant Life Gospel Center doesn't want anything from me. Abundant Life Gospel Center wants something for me.